Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, blockchain, these are some of the terms you hear in the news almost every day. But is it a bubble or is it the future of finance? In this series, we'll bring you some of the leading voices in the crypto space who will help deepen your knowledge of this often misunderstood world. In this episode, you'll hear a discussion between investor Tur Demeester and Jesse Powell. Jesse is the CEO and founder of Kraken.com, one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges in the world, and you're never going to believe where he got his start in the cryptocurrency space. Before there was Bitcoin, there was World of Warcraft Gold. Let's find out how he got from video games into cryptocurrencies that are now disrupting the world. Before Bitcoin, I had a company selling virtual items and currencies for online games. I um, started that in 2001 while I was in college and uh, eventually ran it for the next 10 years. But we sold um, World of Warcraft Gold, Diablo 2, Magic Swords and, and items. Um, we did up to about 20 games um, over the course of time and uh, eventually broke off in um, 2011 to do Bitcoin full time. And so like these virtual currencies, um, which was kind of really relegated to a small niche of the population, like people who would play games, were, were those the people who would buy and sell the currencies mostly? Yeah, so for the, for the previous business um, that sold virtual items and currency for online games, the, the customer was usually um, either a kid or uh, a young adult, um, you know, like early 20s to, to mid 30s. Um, we had clients from all over the world obviously, um, and uh, people were, were buying the currency either to spend it inside the game to um, on whatever kind of um, money sinks they had in the game, like uh, extra features or, or whatever, um, or they were using it to, um, in some cases, actually as a, a real currency to pay for things in the real world. We would often hear about kids that were like at school that would want to like you know, buy a brownie from another kid or something, but like didn't have cash or PayPal account and would, would say, okay, just like send me some World of Warcraft gold for this brownie and we're good. Or people even paying for like car repairs or other other things, you know, if they didn't have cash or um, a credit card. Yeah, that's fascinating. And then and then when you heard about Bitcoin for the first time, like what what was your experience and like did anything strike you about that as special or, or interesting? Yeah, so I was immediately skeptical of it because there had been many attempts at creating alternate currencies before um, that had gotten trouble with regulators like e-gold, as an example. Um, and in the you know one of the main things that I thought was preventing World of Warcraft gold from becoming a bigger thing, despite there being tens of millions of players, uh, was that World of Warcraft was uh, the currency was tied up in this virtual economy. Um, that was controlled unpredictably by the game developers, by, by Blizzard Entertainment. So, um, and they were opposed to real money trading or the exchange of gold for um, like real, real world services or, or cash. And I assume they were also in control of the money supply. Like yeah. they could decide how much currency was created. Completely. Yeah. So uh, there's actually been a huge amount of inflation of World of Warcraft gold over time. I mean, what what cost, you know, I think it was like $5 for one gold when World of Warcraft came out, and today it's like 10 cents for one gold. Uh, so it's been hugely inflated. So obviously not a good store of value, but even apart from that, you can't ever rely on um, your account being there tomorrow. They could close your account for any reason, and um, real money trade is explicitly prohibited by the terms. And so they um, regularly close accounts for engaging in that activity. So um, if you can't rely on your money to be there, it's not a really, it's not a real good wallet, right? So um, it couldn't be used for anything at scale. And that was like the main problem with World of Warcraft gold. Um, but what was different about Bitcoin uh, was, was that it is obviously completely decentralized. Nobody controls it. Nobody has the authority to shut down your account or or be the intermediary or prevent you from sending money from one person to the other um, or prevent you from signing up for an account. And so um, because there are no gatekeepers or central authorities, it doesn't have those risks. Um, 
And so it solves, you know, really what was like the main thing holding back World of Warcraft as a digital currency from being a bigger thing. Right. And, and, and when you learned about Bitcoin, what did the landscape look like in 2011? Like how, how did people acquire it and how, what did they use it for? So in 2011, people were using it for all sorts of things like, um, you know, obviously the famous story of buying pizza for 10,000 Bitcoin. Um, there was people selling alp alpaca socks. Um, people were, were selling all kinds of things, like uh, largely like at a small scale, like things that they would produce themselves or it was like their own family business. that They were selling things for Bitcoin just to try to um, promote Bitcoin. Uh, so it wasn't used very widely. Um, people were buying it largely through over-the-counter trades, like direct, you know, person-to-person -person trading through like the Bitcoin IRC channel, um, and also through what was the largest exchange at the time, Mt. Gox. Uh, so those are the primary ways to get it. Um, obviously, the exchange space is greatly diversified today, and um, there's still a lot of trading through OTC. Uh, Kraken does OTC. Um, we're seeing now OTC is, is kind of, it's more so the, the larger players, um, that are using it like, uh, hedge funds or other like larger financial services or large buyers or family offices that want to like take a, a large stake for like, and hold it for a long period of time. Uh, so they're doing the big OTC trades and it's more the, the smaller traders that are, um, using the exchange platform and taking liquidity directly from the market. Do you see any 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 technical work being done, or any possibilities that you know down the road auditability will will improve somehow, or maybe are there ways for customers to interact with exchanges while still retaining more control of their funds? I think we'll probably see more of the latter, um, less custody held with the exchanges, and more of um, kind of a multi-sig or credit relationship. So, so multi-sig, can you, can you explain multi-sig? Sure, Just very yeah. briefly, what does it mean for, for the customer? Multi-sig means like multiple signatures. So it's, it's basically um, like two of three signatures required to initiate a transfer. So um, in the case of an exchange, it could be that the exchange has one key or you know, is able to, to make one signature. Uh, the customer has one signature and uh, some other third-party wallet provider like BitGo, for example, could... Um, be the third. And so we have a relationship such that, um, you know, let's say there's certain rules in place, like if the trade is under X amount, then BitGo automatically signs for it. If it's over X amount, then the customer has to sign for it too. Um, where you always have two of three engaged in the transaction uh, so that no single entity can steal the coins or lose the coins. Um, and the worst case scenario, you know, is that, um, uh, some small transfer gets through that, that was like automatically approved because it was below a threshold. But more than that, you know, there, there's basically a cap on the maximum that can be lost. So Jesse Powell saw how World of Warcraft Gold had the potential to become a groundbreaking digital currency. Millions of people were using it, but because it was centralized, the virtual gold had nowhere to go. Bitcoin was the solution to that. The cryptocurrency industry is growing to become incredibly diverse. It makes us ask, what if? What are the endless possibilities? Where is it going to go? Where is it going to take us? It's going to take creativity, the kind of creativity that made kids exchange World of Warcraft gold for brownies as if it were cash. We hope you enjoyed this episode. For Real Vision, I'm Ash Bennington.